Hey, finally, it was having trouble connecting this morning. So I'm still working on the owl, but hopefully showing something new today, something different. Um, Friday, I hope to be outside in my uh, garage studio doing some plaster. I was working on the feet and um, absolutely confirming that I'm going to make the nails in plaster. So I'll get some of that work started out there and I'll begin on Friday, but I need a little time to set up. It's It was so cold for a while, I abandoned my outdoor or garage studio. So um, that'll be fun to go back and forth between two places. Meanwhile, I want to work on some of these side feathers today. So I found this really good video with some real good close-ups. And you can see that there. It looks like I have my own pet owl. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Got my coffee. <laughs> Just waking up. So anyway, this is a really good video. And I'll put the link in when we're done. I didn't have time before. Um, I'll try to play some of it so you can see right now. Um, it's got some great positions. And this back view, that is kind of a hard <laughs> a hard thing to find. Um, you can see there's a lot of variety in barn owls. <laughs> That's a good one. But just to go back to that previous view, um, I was going to look at some of these feather views. And when you're stop at, doing stop action on a video, sometimes you have to find just the right spot. There's um, a lot of uh, color that influences what you see. And that can be a little challenging, but uh, by looking at all different views, you can kind of get to see, um, you know, where the color is not a factor in just the geometry. So I'm gonna try to do some of these feathers here and I can see where this main feather um, vein exists here. And so I'm gonna just go through and start to articulate it a little because once you get to the very end you really don't see it and I'm going to do this on both sides today so let me give you a closer look at what I'm doing bring this up and we'll get, get right up to it I did work on the feet and uh, it looks a little better but the nails they really have to be done in plaster to be the level of accuracy that I would want to so let me bring this down. Hopefully you can see. I mean, this is not that hard. It's just that one of the things that I want to do, and maybe that tool isn't the best starting off. Let me use this glyptic tool. These feather shafts, shafts, that's the word I was <laughs> I couldn't think of. They have to be straight to look right. So I'm going to go through and, and they're not dead center in the feather. They're kind of off to the side. So I'm just going to go through and, you know, they kind of end. Just want to go through and carefully articulate that. And when I brush that, it'll get more soft and more subdued. But I want to place it correctly. And you can see, perhaps, see how straight I'm trying to make that. So pretend you're looking at a real feather or ha get a real feather to sit next to you and get that feather vein. So it just raises up a little bit. I'm using this glyptic tool uh, from sculpturedepot.net. Um, I've talked about these before and I have the link to Sculpture Depot on our website, learnsculpture.org. There we go. That's better. So I'm going to do the feather shafts first and then start to articulate where those feather lines come from. So the feather shaft just sticks up a little bit. I guess you can barely see that. I keep repeating as well in my finished video, I will... Um, include the close-ups where I can take a close-up photo and put it in the final video. So you can really see the stages without waiting and waiting and waiting. And yes, these projects for me anyway, are taking time because I can only work on these live stream mornings really. And I work for a couple hours and then that's, I've got to move on to other 
things. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to sculpt full time right now, but that's okay. That gives me a chance to show you something new every morning. So I have a little background music now going on in my live streams because I have um, two dogs who like to start to go to sleep and snore <laughs> underneath me. They are Boston Terriers and they snore when they sleep. Okay, so you can't see a lot of that feather shaft because it's, it's covered. And these feather endings are so fluffy and kind of fringed. Other birds have a very uh, kind of strong feather edge, but these are very fringed. And all owls, as a matter of fact, have a lot of fringing. And I started to do it right there. The reason for the fringing is that makes them completely silent when they go in for a, a landing or try to catch a mouse. So now on these lower feathers, you can't really, I need to bring it down anyway, you can't really see where the feather shaft is. So that's okay, oops, let's get that smoothed down, smooth down, just like that. All right, because they're covering each other, so that's fine. And I'm just gonna smooth this down a little bit right here. right there. And I'm keeping a relatively sharp edge here because when I do the little bit of fringing, I want it to be, you know, looking like a thin feather. I don't want it to look heavy. It has to have that illusion. So let me start and do some fringing right here. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a different tool. This is a, a riffler tool that I have. This has lots of little cuts in it. And I'm just going to do straight out and then maybe curve at the very edge. And what I'm also doing is I'm looking at my source material. Although this one's really a little difficult. Let me bring out my, my larger pictures. Let's see if I can find one right available here. Oops. Okay, so I have my larger photos that I printed out, and I've got some great um, views here as well as in the video. So I can see, I don't know if you can see from there, I can see some of the uh, feather shafts and then some of the fringing on the edges of those feathers. Here's a good one here. And they, they tend to be a little bit more rounded than I have them. And I might make that edit. I'm seeing a shape here where it, it's much more rounded up here than I have it. So I'll have to go in and correct that. Okay. But I'll go back to making my cuts. And I'm just going to make very careful parallel they have to be parallel to look right because, you know, they're not going to come out all at different angles. Now, some people will take uh, try to create a ruffled feather look. Well, that's okay as long as you're observing um, the, uh, the overlap. The overlap is going to happen in a real feather, too. So this is going to come from the feather shaft, but very carefully creating that parallel parallel line look. And then a little bit of that um, fringy edge so they can do their thing as they land silently, stealthily on a mouse. Gosh, I don't want to be a mouse. That would not be good. All right, so, and then it, it, it kind of, you've got to be real careful how you, how you end these because it has to be logical to look right. It has to come out in a logical way. And I'm, I keep looking at my reference material to make sure I'm seeing where it comes out. And then if you want to, as you go, to, you can soften as you go. Here's my, my brush. 
as you see, and just kind of soften that. That gives it, and I don't have anything on that brush. And if it gets clogged up, I'll put a little alcohol to clean it. But that just gives it a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that from there. Just gives it a little bit of realism to brush the clay. I have regular alcohol here to um, clean off my brush if I want to do that. So I don't get too much alcohol in the clay. I just clean it off with the alcohol. And I have paper towels right here. So I can put that back and just soften that, what I've just done. It looks so much better. And then I'll do this feather now, this, this next one. Just bring out that. And we do have a, a, a video on textures that Chuck Oldham made years ago, but it really helps you um, get a handle on how to even start a texture because you, you know, if your goal is to have a realistic effect, um, textures help you get there. You know, you can have the proportions right and that's great. Um, but then, you know, maybe you want a more abstract uh, look finally. That's fine, mm -hmm. but if you want a realistic look, it's those textures that really help put you uh, in the realistic zone. <laughs> and it's the way you uh, approach a texture that really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to look at that video to get ideas between the, the difference between fur, feathers, I'm just going to take that and just kind of combing the hair of the bird. And I'll go back through and, you know, you don't want every cut to be at the same um, distance from each other. You want to vary it up, but you also want to continually look at your source material. Now, you notice I'm using a different tool here. Let's get it right where you can see it. This is my other loop riffler, which I really like because it um, softens and cleans at the same time. So I like to put that on there. It gets those edges nice. I like the effect of that. So between these tools that I've been showing you, let's let's review them again. We've got two rifflers. And we've got, you can see what they look like. They have little fine cross cuts in them, a brush, and a glyptic tool, which you can get from Sculpture Depot. All the links are at learnsculpture.org. I don't make any money or commission from, from these. It's just helping, hopefully, hopefully helping you um, uh, get ahead. Isn't a wrestler a file? Um, Mark, I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, oh, the riffler, probably. The file, like a file. It is. It is like a file. Exactly. Um, so it, it kind of cleans as it cuts, which is really helpful. So I think you'll... You'll like using that. Okay, well, that's all for today. And um, Friday, I'm going to be out in my uh, plaster making area, my mold making area, and I'll show you my equipment and materials and see how far we can get with starting in our plaster work and mold making work. So I'll, I'll see everybody on Friday and run this until then. Thank you so much. Bye, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Al. Uh, don't, no problem. I'm going to run this all through again, and I'll see you on Friday. We're going to be out in my little plaster studio, mold making area on Friday. Got warm out finally, so I can. All right, so have, have a good day. See you on Friday morning. Bye-bye.